parched and inhospitable land of towering mountains and endless canyons which seemed to reach down into the very bowels of the earth. Ragged vegetation clings like an unkempt beard to the canyon walls whose majestic peaks are inaccessible to man. A hostile land it was called by the Spanish conquistadores, who, led by Coronado, trekked across it in their futile search for that fabulous city of Tribola, whose walls were said to be built of pure gold. Later, it became known as the Black Land. This was the name given it by the pioneer gold prospectors, for so many of whom the trail ended fatally in this labyrinth of desolate canyons. takes place right here in Arizona in the most troubled period in all its history. The dreaded Geronimo, again brandishing that once buried hatchet, led his fiery Apaches in constant raids against their implacable enemy, the white man. But no power on earth could deter the gold seekers. Passion burned in their veins along with alcohol with all the fierceness of the Arizona sun. Our story rightly begins one August day in 1882 in Tucson, waiting for the stagecoach. Satisfied, Judge? Regarding the money, yes. We sold the ranch according to your instructions. In my name? Of course. Here is the bill of sale. Naturally, we had to overcome certain difficulties. In Lopez? No, here. All the property of the late Robert belonged to his widow. And if someone would make a claim. No danger of that. I'll probably never come back. Mr. Brad? I should say so. You've been judge here for so many years. And it's the cost of much bitterness and many enemies. They wanted to take my job away. They can have it. I can't believe you're serious. You'll believe it, all right, when you won't see me returning to Tucson. Happy journey, Judge, and congratulations on your wedding. It's all settled. The bill of sale of the ranch has been made out in my name. You see, here in the West, a woman's signature doesn't count. Oh, and you tell me now. Tell me you don't approve of your future husband looking after the property of his wife, my dear. The ranch was Robert's property, and Jimmy's entitled to his share of it. We'll take care of the details in law, but, hmm? Joe's information was right after all. He's carrying a fortune along with him. Thinking of attacking the stagecoach? Someone will do it for us. They're bound to change horses at the San Francisco station. Let's go. We haven't much time. Come on, Dick. 
You want more trouble? It's just that I'm so soft-hearted. I came to see my old buddy. Why don't you get out and keep out? You'll never change, will you? You're just as inhospitable as ever. It doesn't matter. I've come to do you a favor. What would you give to even accounts with Judge Driscoll? Huh? What do you know about... About the judge and me. Everything. It's none of your business. But it is yours. Driscoll is arriving on the stagecoach today. And if I were in your shoes... Yes? I'd do what you'll do. I'd kill him. What do you hope to gain from his death? Driscoll's carrying a mint in dollars. I'd be content with half of it. I'm not a thief. Driscoll sentenced you as if you were. Now you're practically on the border, and you've got the chance of a lifetime to get even. What do you say? That's my lookout, Capstan. With Driscoll out of the way, who could accuse you of anything? There are only four people in the coach. Word will get around that it was the Apaches of Geronimo, <laughs> as usual. You couldn't hope for anything easier. All you have to do is wait for them. After all, they're bound to come this way. They must stop here for the horses. Count me out. Find someone of your own kind. I had a hard time believing it, Steve. But now I know they were right. Who was right? Everyone that warned me that you were a coward. Now I understand why that skirt threw you over. Because guys like you are just born to be kicked around. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to teach you a lesson. Uh, hands up! Things have changed, Capstan. You're not going to kill us, are you? I told you just now that I'm not a killer like you. Get out, all of you. Turn quick about it. Get moving. And stay out of my sight. Disappear. I'll be back, Steve. <laughs> 
Come back. Wouldn't surprise me. I've waited quite some time for the man who has arrived on the stagecoach. I knew that sooner or later he'd pass this way. Judge Driscoll? He wanted the little I possessed. So he stole it. Are you going to kill him? Nervous, young fella? A little. I've heard so much about the famous Geronimo that... Did you, uh, want to see him face to face, eh? Heaven forbid. You've nothing to worry about, Jimmy. Everything will be all right. <laughs> that I hope. We're as well guarded as if we had a treasure aboard the stagecoach. Just what do you mean by treasure? My idea of treasure is my own height. And no matter how ugly it is, I prize it dearly. <laughs> it's the only one I got. <laughs> Are you that afraid of losing it? <laughs> afraid enough. But guess who's worse off here? <laughs> this young foreigner. Well, my brother's not accustomed to violence and bloodshed. He's always lived in New Orleans, and brute force is still strange to him. I get you, I get you. I felt the same way when I came here from Scotland. Then I got used to it. This is the best cure for any kind of worry. A pack of cards. What's better than a game? To pass the time away, eh? And what are the stakes? Oh, just a few dollars to make it exciting, eh? What do you say? Just a moment. What did you say your name was? Richard Logan. May I know why you ask? Your name is new to me, but somehow your face... Uh... You think we've met before this? Hmm. I could swear to it. Years ago in Tucson, I had to deal with a card shop. You've got it wrong. I've never lived in Tucson. A fellow's name was Poker Dick, and you look very much like him. You're wrong. I'm no card shop. I'm a cowhead.
Bloods, bloodthirsty Apaches. They were waiting for us. Apaches? And when we crossed Sandy Creek... Uh, You're sure that they were sure, Apaches? Sure, sure, don't I know they're people Christ. They were Apaches. I still think they might have been bandits. They weren't. I'm sure of it. Don't stand there like fools. The driver's wounded. Give him a hand. Hey, you! Thanks. My throat's as dry as sandpaper. What I need more than anything is a good stiff drink. What happened to Foster? He was shot and killed during the assault. A bullet between the eyes. <laughs> Am I seriously hurt? Ah, uh, it's nothing but a scratch. <laughs> we'll have him as right as rain in no time. <laughs> Good, we're already late and I want to get a little bit before dark. That's what we all want, so let's get going with the horses. It's impossible, Judge. Foster is dead and Silas is in no condition to drive a coach for three or four yes, hours. Yes, I am. We'll leave as soon as they've changed their horses. And to hell with the Apaches. Maybe they weren't Apaches. Well, who then? Bandits who made themselves up like Indians, but white men. Have you ever heard of Bert Capstan? Capstan? I kicked him out of Tucson two months ago. He never dared across my path. Bowman. I never forget a name or a face. I believe you. It's not easy to forget a person you threw into prison. It wasn't I. It was the law that took care of that. You killed a man in cold blood. A man that you had hired to murder me. Are you joking? Why should I want to get rid of you? The mines of Lover's Hill were an excellent reason. <laughs> they weren't worth it. They dried up soon after and didn't cover my expenses. I say, I did you a favor? Did you call me for this? No. I wanted to warn you to be careful. Why? Don't you try any tricks, Loman. If someone's going to die, it'll be you. I've warned you, Loman. I'm keeping an eye on you during our stay here. How's the driver? You'll get over it. He won't be able to drive the coach for a few days, however. But what'll happen if we stay here? And the Indians attack. There'd have to be a lot of them to attack. And there aren't, so... You sure? Well, if there were, they wouldn't have let the stagecoach get that by. The conscious Indian seems to be sleeping on a job, so we hustle him up a bit. One knows very well what he's doing. But if you're in a hurry, give him a hand. Sure, I'm in a hurry. My boss wants to get to Lawford before night, and whether those lousy Indians like it or not, we'll get there. And who is your boss? Judge Toby Driscoll, of course. Oh. You were just talking to him. Judge Driscoll's in a hurry to get on, and he mustn't be kept waiting. I'm afraid he'll have to wait all the same, whether he likes it or not. Unless he wants to get killed en route. Ah, we gave him such a lesson. They're not likely to try it again. If the driver is gravely wounded, then someone else must drive, because it's essential that we arrive tonight in Lobert. It's better to get there late than never. You are referring to the Indians. I'm not afraid. They won't try another attack on the coach. It's possible. But all the same, madam, I advise you to act prudently. Prudently? We're not afraid, are we, Jimmy? Since you and Driscoll insist that there's no immediate danger and Ruth is in a hurry to go on. Well, of course she's in a hurry, and she's right. Every woman's in a hurry to get married. Please keep quiet. This is none of your business. Well, I'm in a hurry to get out of here. Did you get me, my friend? Now, why is that confused Mexican taking so much time with the horses? Juan knows his job very well. And I thank you not to call me your friend. I can't wait to get out of this rotten hole. I'm just as anxious as you. But I think it's dangerous. What do you mean? Nothing. It was my duty to warn you. Don't worry. We shall not blame you for anything. But we're not afraid of the Indians and we're anxious to go on. Well, come here, darling. Roscoe, take care of this. Uh, do you think the Indians will stage another attack? 
My opinion is that it's wiser to wait. The wisest would have been not to leave town and wait for the army to wipe out Geronimo. I told her so, but... Is she so much in love that she can't wait? Terribly hot in this miserable station. Why don't you try to rest, darling, while they change the horses? Do you know that man? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Some years ago, I sent him to jail. Why? What does it matter? We're alone. Soon you'll be my wife. I don't know why, but somehow I, I'm afraid, Toby. Of what? I don't know. Just of Robert's death, Jimmy's return, and the sudden sale of the ranch. It all happened so suddenly. Why worry at a moment like this? We need each other, my dear. Forgive me, Toby. I am a bit tired. And the Indian attack has made me nervous. Well, when we get to love it, you'll forget all that. So many things have happened. And now we're stuck in this well, place. Don't you worry, darling. Loman just wanted to frighten us. Where's Jimmy? Uh, I think he's with Roscoe. You'll see there. He'll soon love the West. I'll be right back. You wait here. Let him go? I don't know yet. The judge has always been a lucky man, especially with women. Indian! Jimmy! No! They're attacking! Get out of the way! They're pumas, and they had come here unarmed. You mean to say you know them? They're friends of yours? Yes. They live in the mountains around here, and they often come to the station. They're good people and completely peaceful. The only good Indians are dead Indians. We're going to regret this mistake very soon, I'm afraid. Why? Jimmy wounded their chief, and his warriors are obviously going to resent what the boy did to him. What happened isn't my brother's fault. He, he mistook them for the Indians who attacked the stagecoach an hour ago. I know, but it won't be easy to convince them. Convince them? I wouldn't even try. I'm not losing any more time on their account. And when they come to ask us why? You'll have to take care of that. By that time, we'll be far away. Does it hurt? A bit. Nothing serious. All I need is another slug of whiskey. Pilot, are we ready? We'll go as soon as the horse has been harnessed. But to get to Lorba, it'll take at least five hours. Ah, I've gone further than that in much worse condition. Don't worry, I'll make it. Take care.
I think you're making a mistake. Afraid of being left alone with those angry Indians. Do you share his opinion? No. No, I don't. Let's get going, Silas. The sooner we get out of this place, the better. Back again, Bert Capstan. What's going on? We visitors, Judge. I believe they've come to see you. Stop! If you try to come any nearer, you'll pay for it. I've already told you to keep away. Steve, hear my story first. I have something to say. And all of you had better listen to me. Say it from where you are, then go away. We're both worn out. I'm dying of thirst, and our horses are half dead. Don't try any tricks, Capstan, or I'll make you pay for it. What could the two of us do against all your guns? Who's the other one? I must tell you about him, and about something of great importance. Above all, to Judge Driscoll. A man like you can have nothing to say to me. And yet? If I tell you, you'll thank me as long as you live. Which won't be long if you refuse to listen. We might just as well, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe so. Will you allow us to enter then? Throw down your guns. Throw down our guns, Loman? Either that or stay out. Make up your mind. <laughs> Are you that afraid of me? Just afraid I'd have to go to the trouble of killing you. By the time we realized it, it was already late. They came from all sides, yelling like so many fiends and shooting like crazy. <laughs> Bill got up as soon as it started. How did you manage to get away without being hurt? If you will look, we were being chased by over 50 Apaches and we didn't get hit. Suddenly we turned around and charged and... <laughs> you don't believe me? No. Only a complete idiot would believe your yarn. Believe it or not, this is the truth. What would I gain by lying to you? I don't know yet. I know you enough to expect only the worst from your captain. We will want to look out for you long before we left Tucson. Would I be such a fool to put my neck in this death trap? Come on, we've lost enough time already. I'll lock you up. Get going. Silence. <laughs> Get a move on. I'll tell you the truth. Let us out of here, Loman. Silas, what's the matter? Uh, I don't know. He can't I, drive the coach in his condition. A little dizzy. I have to be in love before tonight. Come along, Roscoe. Take his place. Hey, Judge! Listen to me, Driscoll! What is it? Leave the loot here. You'll never reach law but alive, and dead men have no use for dollars. <laughs> These aren't Apaches. Are you sure? Absolutely. These Indians are pumas, and they're furious about what happened. 
If he's dead, they'll want to avenge him. Don't worry, Jimmy. It'll be all right. Curse them. They had to arrive just now. What do they want? To parley. I suppose they'll want an explanation. Better let a bullet do the explaining. I'm afraid there'll be no other way out. But first, we must find out what they want. Uh, who will go out to speak to them? I'll have to go. I don't want to, but there's no other solution. And if you see them wearing their war paint, well, try not to get hit. My brother Taraka has been murdered. The Puma warriors want the murderer or they'll declare war. It's not the young man's fault. He took you for Apaches. I will do justice for you. Maybe he's conniving with him to betray us. You don't know him. He'd never betray anyone. He'd much sooner be shot. Worse than I thought. He's dead. And they want to avenge him. Avenge him? How? By torturing the man who killed him. They demand that we give him up. My brother. And you accepted, didn't you? That's what you would have done. Look at them. Do you think they'd be so wild with rage? If I'd accepted their request, we'll have to fight. What? Fire the gates. Oh, Come on. Women will never have the guts to attack. We'll have to wait for them to go. One thing is certain. Okay. Oh. They'll have to make tracks before dark. Why? In law, but there's a cavalry squad. If the coach doesn't arrive, they'll send their men. Naturally. They'll set out at once to look for us. And they'll get here in time to bury us. What was that you said, Loma? Even if our soldiers were to come, they'd only find our corpses. A very poor joke. I sure wish it was. Take no notice. He's scared to death or he's fooling us. I didn't think you were such a coward. You'd be afraid of a couple of savages who will run away as soon as we I'm shoot. I'm not worried about the Pumas. About what? The Apaches. They'll be here in less than an hour. Capstan told the truth. Signals! Geronimo is calling the traps together. I could use a good stiff drink. Don't just hang around, Lohman. What do you suggest to get us out of this mess? There's one solution. It's mighty dangerous, but it's the only way what out. What is it? Send word to Lorbert. A good rider can get there in less than three hours' time and alert the cavalry. He'll really have to be good. If our luck holds out, they'll get here before the Apaches. With or without luck, we'll send Geronimo home with a tail between his legs. And who's to go? You? No. As chief of this station, I can't leave. What do you suggest? A volunteer. It's a dangerous mission, and no one can be forced. Why don't we send Capstan? Good idea. He's an outlaw, and if they kill him, we lose nothing. Except our lives, no? And we'll lose them if we trust Capstan. Do you think he'd risk his neck to save yours or mine? All we're doing is losing time without getting Agreed. anywhere. Who wants to volunteer? I don't intend to leave Ruth while she's in danger. I'm better at shooting than at riding. I think I'll be more useful here. Driscoll pays me to stay at his side. I'm not going to leave him at a time like this. Diamonds. No good. I never make a decision without asking these friends of mine. Nothing doing. I go. I can't say he inspires faith. I can. If you don't approve, I have a better solution. 
That you take his place or send your man Roscoe. I'm for sending the unconscious Mexican. before the Indians arrive. Roscoe, your place is up at that window. Silas, over there. You judge near the door. Jimmy, take care of her. Marksman. So they can shoot us in the back? With the Indians on the war path? You let them out. Each man has the right to risk his neck if he wants to. Roscoe. Careful, you don't make a wrong move. Beat it. When this is over, we'll square our accounts, Captain. If we're still alive. The Apaches have arrived. Before attacking, they'll do some reconnoitering. Keep a sharp lookout. Take your positions, then move around. They'll think we're many more than we are. A lesson in tactics by an officer who was kicked out of the service. One of the things I have to thank you for, Judge. Hmm. We got our guns back. Yeah, but out there we got the Pumas and the Apaches. So what? We'll have to wait. Sooner or later, we'll get the chance to pick up the money and beat it. Or else we can share it with whoever is left, <laughs> if anyone is left. What do you mean? Forget it, forget it. The danger's outside. So don't go wasting any bullets, understand? Don't worry. they're close, shoot to your heart's content. I'm sorry I shot at that Indian. I was sure they were the men who had attacked us. I know, it was just bad luck and we'll have to do our best. Cover that window. And don't you come down no matter what happens. We're in a desperate situation, aren't we? Juan Diego was going to warn the cavalry. Why didn't you go? I don't know. Perhaps not to leave you alone. I don't quite understand you. I don't want you to be afraid. You don't know what fear is, do you? We're all afraid sometime or other. How long have you been living all alone here in this desert? Long enough to trust nobody. And to hope for nothing. And is that the way you've always felt? No. There was a time.
Juan Diego.
they're waiting until our nerves give way. Why have they gone away? They haven't gone. They're quite near, behind those hills. They know they're stronger, and that we can't hold out. And from the drums? Will they go on forever? Damn Mexican got himself shot like a fool. Juan Diego was my friend, and he died to save us all. Total waste. You should have known that he wouldn't get through the Indian lines, that sleepwalker. You'd better keep quiet. You hear me? Are you all right? Yes, thank you. This won't be their last attack, will it? No. And where's your brother? He's gone for ammunition. Actually, he isn't my brother. He's the brother of my husband, who was killed two months ago in Tucson by a murderer who crept up and shot him in the back. Ah, now I'm beginning to understand. What do you mean by that? It wouldn't be the first time that Judge Driscoll gets rid of a man who is in his way. Oh, you are mistaken. Toby was my husband's best friend. He proved it by avenging his death. You must be very grateful, then. Yes. He also arranged the sale of our property at a much higher price than I would have succeeded in getting. So, now he expects you to pay him back. You are insulting. Are you in love with him? Or do you simply need his protection? I don't need anyone's help. I've got to learn to survive. I want you to know that I'm going to kill Judge Driscoll. Why? You wouldn't understand. Uh, what are you doing, Ruth? We were talking about you. I've already told you to keep out of my affairs. Ruth and I are engaged. Are you afraid that I'll tell her about your past? She knows everything. I told her when I asked her if she would marry me. Did you tell her about Margaret as well? Still thinking about her. You're very ingenuous. Margaret was a pretty girl who enjoyed society life in beautiful clothes and jewels. You wouldn't have been happy with her. You should thank me. She ended up as she deserved. You can't fool me now, Fiscal. You're responsible for that girl's death and for many other crimes while you hid behind the mask of a respectable judge. Years ago, I spared your life, but I think I'm going to repent my gesture. All you did was stab me in the back. Don't shoot, Loman. Don't, for my sake. You've chosen a good time to kill each other, you two. Why don't you let it wait till we get rid of the Apaches? What did that man tell you about me? What I already knew. What do you mean? I think he's right. I cannot permit this attitude. You have always permitted only those things which satisfy your ambition. Then why did you agree to marry me? I don't know. And it doesn't even matter. This will be the end of us all. Nobody will escape, I know. Don't worry, it's all right. Jimmy, take care of her. Isn't it about time we did something to save our necks? Do what? What else is there to do except fight for our lives? Why don't you hand over the boy? Oh, Jimmy? Of course. He's the one the Indians are after. It wouldn't be any use. Even if we gave him up, the Apaches won't stop till they've murdered the lot of us. Well, if nothing else, it might help us to gain a few hours' time. How? The Apaches will certainly join in torturing him. The boy will live three or four hours at least. Too many things can happen in three hours. 
I say we should try it. And how about you? A scurvy trick that no human being would ever have suggested. Convince him, Judge, before I persuade him with my gun. No. No. How can you allow it, Toby? You can't think of letting poor Jimmy... I'm sorry. But he's the only one to blame for this. It's comforting to die to save so many. The decision should rest with the majority. The majority, huh? Formed by vermin like you. You know what to do, boy. Now get going. No. Tell them they're crazy. Toby, you can't allow it. How about it? Which side are you on? Doesn't matter what I think. Whatever I say, there's no other way out. No, no, don't let him die. You I'm sorry, dear. But all our lives are at stake. Beginning with yours. Drink this. <laughs> Turn that boy loose. And don't any of you move. If you try any tricks, I shoot. <laughs> Open the gate. decent man would have done in my place. Go back to your position. Jimmy, take your rifle and go to your post. No. I thank you with all my heart. What would you give to get rid of Loman? No? No, but soon. Now he's more useful to us alive. How much for his head, boss? The woman for you. And the money. The money for you? I want only half. One can't have everything, you know. <laughs>
trying to have a little fun, huh? It's no use shouting. They can't hear you anyway. And if Frisco comes, since he's the one that murdered your husband, well, that ought to shut his mouth. He murdered him? Nah, he's much too sly. Roscoe did the job, but he paid a lot of money to have him killed. You have to see Me a lawyer? Anyone in Tucson will tell you. Just ask him. <laughs> Come on, no, beautiful. Stop it. Toby. Toby, help me, Toby. Leave her alone. Hear me, Fuller. and I'll kill you. Last night, in a ranch in the outskirts of Barrett's, they killed five people and then burned down the house. This girl escaped. There are Apaches, many of them armed with repeating rifles, heading for Sandy Creek. And another thing, sir, there's no sign of the coach. Many of them? Isolated tribes. They have sworn allegiance to Geronimo. Get your men ready, Sergeant. We're leaving at once. We'll teach them the lesson they deserve. Yes, sir. What can I do to help? Nothing. Go inside the house and don't come out no matter what happens. No. No. You shouldn't ask me to stay inside idle while you're all out here fighting for our lives. Even if I'm only a woman, that doesn't mean I lack courage. I want you to know that I wish I'd met you some other place a long time ago. Those Indians are going to kill us all very soon. Since we must die, I want you to know that I too wish that we had met long before this.
to harness the horses to the stagecoach. Come with me, Capstan. You think we can get away with that rattle trap? No, I'll go alone, with the four men outside. With the corpses? Yes. The Apaches will think they're alive and waste time shooting at them. Are you crazy? You won't get very far. That much I know. But in the meantime, you can make your escape through the other door. No, no. Please don't throw away your life. All right, give us a hand. It's all right. He always knows what he's doing. Look, his card's the King of Hearts. <laughs> Now, let's see which card is mine. Four of clubs. A bad sign. Ugh. Now, let's see if I can change my... drive the coach out of this gate, and you escape through the other one immediately after. And take care of Ruth, will you? I'd rather die than let an Indian touch her. <laughs> you don't have to worry. I'll take care of her. Open the gate, Capstan. Jimmy, what are you doing? You must be brave, Ruth. He sacrificed himself for us. I'll get the money. Let go. No, I won't. 
You've no time to lose. Go away. Are you crazy? Go away. I'm not going go to die like a fool for you. Are you mad? You go want to away. put my heart to the curse of Indian? I'm dying. All right, go say it, that's what you want. Ruth! Ruth, let's go. Come on, quick. No. No. You don't want Jimmy to die in vain. He sacrificed his life for you. from life. There's no one who means anything to you. Is that what you're trying to say to me? No. For many years I've lived on my own, fed up with the rest of the world. When you arrived here on that coach, I knew you were what I'd been waiting for. That's why I think I must be mad, because I'm so happy now, just being with you. Even though In that case, I must be as mad as you. Why do you say that? Because I have loved you from the very first minute I saw you. <laughs> 